So, I've been playing a lot of Pokemon lately. And I think I have Pokemon fever. I hope it's not contagious. Hi everyone, and welcome to Noodle Toots. My name is Toby, and Pokemon! Not only have I been playing the games more, but Lady Dynamite Creates made the cutest Cubone trainer, and as soon as I finished watching her video, I thought, I need to make one too! This trainer isn't made to look like a human equivalent of Cubone, but like a Pokemon trainer whose favorite Pokemon is Cubone. I love it. So I wanted to make something like that for myself based on one of my favorite Pokemon, Arcanine. I want her to have a professional look, but with a certain edge. Like someone you really don't want to piss off, but you low-key want her to step on your head. Kind of like these ladies. I'm using G3 Cleo Denial for this project because of her statuesque figure and warm skin tone. Let's get started. It's been a while since y'all have seen me process a doll for customizing. And to be honest, this is the first G3 Monster High doll I've ever customized. I removed her factory paint with acetone and cut off all her hair close to her scalp. I'll use yarn for her hair, so I'm not going to remove her head. I'm just going to cut an opening and give her a bit of a lobotomy to remove the remaining hair plugs. This was tricky, because the hair plugs in G3 Monster High heads aren't glued into place. They're melted. So you can't really soften the remnants to make them easier to remove like you can with glue. Thanks, I hate it. With the head clean and glued back together, I did that off cam. I needed to do something about those sculpted bandages. I sanded them off with sanding sponges in my Dremel tool. This was not a short process. Be done. You're dead. You're dead. You're dead. And stop. I ended up sanding in multiple bursts so I could keep working without driving myself nuts. Once everything was nice and smooth, I added some matte varnish to the heavily sanded areas to restore them to their normal tone and to help fill in some scratches. I added a few layers of Mr. Super Clear to make the doll all the same texture again and to create a good foundation for the face and body blushing. But let's make her outfit first. I want my RK9 trainer to wear a fitted blouse paired with a vinyl pencil skirt with a high slit. Perhaps not the most practical attire for a trainer, but at least she'll look good. One of the great things about G3 Monster High dolls is their range of body types. However, this does make it a little tricky to make garments that fit everyone using my pre-existing patterns. Thankfully, Moonlight Jewel's blouse pattern fits Cleo nicely, so I'm just following that here. I didn't have the right fabric in the right color, so I tea stained the shirt after it was all put together. That gives it a nice off-white color, no dye necessary. The blouse went off without a hitch, but thanks to Cleo's considerable curves, I'll need to make my own pattern for the skirt. This looks like a job for cling wrap and masking tape. The skirt needs to be nice and snug to show off those curves, and to also keep it in place as she wears it. And to make sure it fits while she's wearing the blouse, I'm creating the tape pattern around it. I'm trimming the ruffle on the front to avoid extra bulk once everything's done. The fabric I'm using for the skirt retains every hole I put into it, so I really need to be deliberate with how I pin and sew it.
Even though this fabric doesn't fray, I hem the skirt to make everything look more finished. I left a small opening unfinished in the back. Instead of adding a closure, I'm sewing the doll into the skirt once everything is complete. That way it stays as snug as I want it to be. For the shoes, I'm just reusing the ones Cleo came with, but I'm giving them a new coat of paint and a few shiny things to better match the look I'm going for. Now it's face up time. I started by blushing her face with oranges and browns to complement her warm complexion. I also added some golden brown resin pigment to give her a little shimmer. Apparently I forgot to record this, so good job, Toby. Cleo's eye mold is very well defined, so I'm just going to follow it for the face up. I want her to look strong and confident, as if she's asking her opponent, are you sure you want to do that? I wanted to convey this mainly through her eyebrows, while avoiding the dreaded DreamWorks face. I think I managed to do that. After a few layers of pencil and pastel, I used some gouache paint to finish her eyes and add some last touches. I mainly did this off cam because I ended up wiping the eyes off and redoing them twice thanks to my less than delicate painter's hand. Look at that. Steady as a rock. Yeah, but I shoot with this hand. Once her face was done, I blushed her body. To finish everything off, I dusted her entire body with the same resin pigment to really give her a warm glow. I also glossed her irises and lips and painted her scalp in preparation for the next step of the process. Girlfriend needs a fluffy yet badass hairstyle like RK9, but rather than giving her something clipped and professional, I want to give her a mohawk. I'm using yarn for this. Her mohawk needs to be pretty big and fluffy, so I'm making my webs extra thick. I'm combining straightened and unstraightened webs for texture and volume. Once those are put together, I'm using hot glue to quickly and securely attach them to her head. Some of the webs look a little jank, but that'll be remedied once everything's trimmed to length. Once everything's attached, I add blocking to make the undercut and to cover the plug holes. Once that's dry, I lightly styled the mohawk with an eyebrow razor, water, and a toothbrush. This formidable lady is looking nice, but her outfit is a little plain at the moment. Let's fix that. I was running short on time to get this all wrapped up and posted on time, so I didn't record these steps. So here's what I did. I used small jump rings and half beads to give her some jewelry. I used more of the skirt fabric to give her a matching cravat. I also added some black half beads on the blouse and buttons. I made her a belt with some chain and beads. 
higher purposes bag from a G3 Claudine so she could easily carry her Pokeballs, potions, and poffins. I made her some Pokeballs off camera. Lastly, I had to restyle her hair. I had to manhandle her a bit to add those last details, and it messed up her coiffure. Now I think we can call her done. Meet Tana, the trainer whose cool demeanor hides a fiery passion for battle. Underestimate her, and you're sure to get burned. Boo! You stink! I really enjoyed working on this project, and I'm glad I finally got around to customizing a G3 Monster High doll. Pokemon dolls also seem like a rite of passage for a lot of doll customizers, so I'm glad I got to make one of my own too. What are your favorite Pokemon? Other than Arcanine, I love Psyduck, Swablu, and Rowlet most. Can't possibly be a connection there. Once again, a big thanks to Lady Dynamite Creates for inspiring me to create my own Pokemon trainer doll. If you haven't seen her video yet, go check it out once we wrap up here. If you liked this fiery lady, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for more videos. It really helps the channel out. And I've got lots of fun projects planned for 2024. Don't you want to see those? I want to see those. Thanks again for watching, my dudes, and I'll see you in my next video. <laughs>